Trunks' hair is glowing with an awesome power! Before we begin, I would like to thank Amino who are sponsoring today's video. More specifically, the DBZ Amino app that is available on both iOS and Android. Links in the description. Basically, if you're a Dragon Ball Z fan and you just want to discuss the latest Dragon Ball Super episode, then you can just start a public chat and talk about anything related to Toriyama's work with thousands of members, including myself. I suggest you go follow me there. There you can get notifications about your favorite posts, your favorite followers on there. You can comment on people's profiles. You can start a one-to-one -one chat with a specific user if you'd like. You can have a blog on there even and just create polls about how irritating is Zamasu exactly right now. So just check it out and tell them I sent you. Thanks for listening! That's right everyone, Dragon Ball Super Episode 61 just landed and wow did this get me angry. Zamasu's ambition, the frightening zero mortal plan, as part of a nutritious and destructively imbalanced breakfast. The three Saiyans have just witnessed Black's shocking revelation and it's now up to the other Zamasu to explain the sitch, yo. The future Zamasu went back to the past and had his mind implanted into Goku's body and then joined the future Zamasu to then join forces and take on the world and destroy the world by having no one there. But, I hear you cry, what about the past Zamasu that was killed by Beerus? Ah, well that little time ring he has there completely negates any changes in time. Basically, it's like a child in the schoolyard going, Oh, yeah, well, I have a ring, so that doesn't count. <laughs> well, so much for Goasu. He dead. And now we've got two aggravating twats who then just launch a key barrage to everyone else's face. Goku then decides to retaliate with his own attack to the face, which does nothing because remember Zamasu? He immortal, you ain't. You're gonna die, Goku, you're gonna die. We then get another flashback as to how one Zamasu was able to convince the other Zamasu to join forces. And then you get an, oh, it's such a godly hug and deadly too. And also Black's cheesy grin right here, it's just so convincing. And the schoolyard analogy continues with, Oh yeah, well, no one else gets to make wishes with that! And they blow up the Super Dragon Balls. Dang. And then finally we hear of the Zero Mortals plan in full. And Vegeta basically conveys what we are thinking. How utterly stupid it sounds. After a little smattering of action after all that exposition, Goku and Zamasu see eye to eye. And then Zamasu drops the bomb that he killed Goku's family. And then Goku gets the other bombshell of getting a hand blade to the not face. Then we get an actually kind of disturbing scene of Zamasu or Black killing Chi Chi and Goten and then Goku in Zamasu's body. It's kind of like, oh, did I really want to see that? But good on you, Super, for not flinching. Goku then explodes with fury, as you do. And no stab wound to the chest is going to stop him now. That's the power of love for you. And sure enough, Black gets wailed on, albeit briefly. And then Zamasu gets punched into a building in a way that reminds me of the Hulk punching Thor in the Avengers. It's just so satisfying. But alas, Black is just toying with him and shoots a key blast through the hole, really knocking Goku for six. Then he gets impaled with more blades and explodes. That ain't gonna heal fast, Goku. <sighs> Goku is down and Vegeta wants to take on Black, but Trunks then says, no, I'm gonna do it myself. Wow, Trunks, you're brave, and you're not even blue. Black and Zamasu then just stand there and act pretentiously, and Trunks goes, You're just killing everyone! And then Zamasu and Black are going, Oh, uh, well, you create the sin by going back in time! Yeah, you're an even sinner, double sinner, triple quadruple sinner! Blah! I'm not gonna stop doing this, you know. This is just how they make me feel. But to be fair, all of Trunks' time traveling actually created a new time ring and there are not supposed to be more time rings, so... Yeah, he did do a boo-boo there, but still... I wanted to wail on Zamasu and Black a little more. And then when Trunks goes in, he gets blasted and he falls to the floor and naturally Mai just has to go in there and just see if he's okay. Even though she really cannot compete with Black or Zamasu. As you do. You know what? Vegeta's actually talking the most sense right now. This is really weird. But now Trunks is pissed and he's really powering up. His eyes glow white, he sparks blue electricity. Is he going Super Saiyan Blue? Doesn't quite look it here. Is this like a mastered form of Super Saiyan 2? Could we see Super Saiyan 3? Well, we don't know. We'll have to find out next time. All in all, this episode was really rather emotional. It really got me angry as Zamasu was just really getting on my nerves. 
Not in a bad way, just in a way that made me care. And this is where I think Super's really doing well. It's getting me engaged on an emotional level. And that in itself always guarantees at least a 3 out of 5 stars for me. And this is getting closer towards 4. It also has quintessential screaming and powering up, fights, and then a little bit of exposition. It's actually really sticking to the formula of Dragon Ball Z somewhat. And that was pretty much it. We got a little bit more exposition about how the two Zamasus unleashed their dastardly plan. And there was a bit more fighting. And Trunks powered up, something fierce. Vegeta was kind of relegated to the background, but to be honest, this was really a Trunks episode in terms of character development, with a little bit of Goku as a side dish. It's Dragon Ball, to be fair, so I've got to stick some kind of food analogy in there, really. That was my review of episode 61 of Dragon Ball Super. Tune in next time for my review of episode 62. So until then, be sure to like and subscribe, and until next time, guys, catch you later.